the button, right? Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, so we'll go over the basic anatomy. Um, the lateral retinaculum is a complex uh, area. As we know, uh, it's made up of the lateral patellofemoral ligament, the patellotibial ligament, and the meniscal patellar ligament. The lateral retinaculum has a posterizing vector, which aids in patellofemoral stability and can be compromised after a release. Lateral release in this study in 2006 showed that it increased lateral translation with a 16 to 19 percent decreased force required to displace the patella laterally 10 millimeters in full extension, 10 degrees, and 20 degrees in knee flexion. In another study by Marikan in 2008, a lateral release can also cause increased medial patellar translation. He showed that lateral uh, release uh, led to a 16% reduction in medial stability in full extension and 20 degrees of knee flexion. And Miramoto also showed that an increased medial translation occurred when there was distal uh, extension of the release. And several other studies have noted symptomatic medial instability if the release is extended too proximal proximally into the vastus lateralis. My favorite views to get when I'm assessing the patellofemoral joint is a merchant view um, as opposed to the sunrise view. I like getting that low flexion angle view to get a good axial shot of the patellofemoral joint. We can also uh, look at the sulcus angle as well as a congruence angle to make sure there's no lateral translation. So indications for a lateral release. Now we're not talking about isolated lateral release, we're talking about lateral release in general. Isolated lateral releases have decreased over the past decade due to poor clinical results. Uh, literature outcomes are variable due to different indications. When it's done for instability, patellofemoral instability, the results are poor. When it's done for arthritis, the results are moderately good. When it's done for patellofemoral maltracking in association with another surgery, the results are moderately good. And when it's done for isolated LPCS, so for lateral patellar compression syndrome, the results are actually very good. Better outcomes are done um, when they're in conjunction with another procedure. So indications for lateral release include that lateral patellar compression syndrome, so isolated tilt with no subluxation. Um, and in the, in the literature, there, there are mixed results for isolated articular cartilage defects on the lateral patellar facet or lateral trochlea. Um, again, it improves tilt or maltracking when the retinaculum is excessively tight. The technique, um, it, it should be done in a limited fashion. Again, we don't want to extend it too proximally or too distally. If you look at that schematic below, uh, you, you, don't, you don't want to extend to the vastus lateralis. You want to stay away from that. So you either want to angle your release or stop it below the vastus lateralis insertion. Uh, the goal is to obtain a neutral patellar tilt, not to tilt the patella all the way up. When I was training, I remember everyone wanted to get the patella at 90 degrees, and that's not the goal of the surgery. Um, and you want to avoid, again, proximal or distal extension. Uh, lateral retinacular lengthening ha has actually gained a, a lot of uh, um, traction in, in the literature over the past five years. There are better biomechanical and clinical results. Different techniques are described between pie crusting as well as a retinacular slide or a Z-plasty. When we look at the results of lateral release, uh, there's a meta-analysis by Christian Latterman, who was in the audience, um, in 2007. And what it showed um, was that there was an 80% satisfaction rate. This was done for patellofemoral instability. So it was 80% uh, satisfaction rate in patients only four years out, or less than four years out from surgery. But after four years out, the results significantly decreased to 63% satisfaction rate. When lateral releases are done for anterior knee pain, Shea and Fulkerson in um, 1992 described three groups, and these were done for anterior knee pain. In group A, there were patients with isolated tilt and some minimal chondrosis. Group B had tilt with some significant chondrosis, and group C had normal alignment, had no patellar tilt or subluxation, but they had pain. And what they found was there was a 92% good to excellent result for the patients with isolated tilt and minimal chondrosis. In the patients with tilt and significant chondrosis, the good to excellent results dropped to 22%. And the patients who just had pain and no malalignment only had a 13% good to excellent result. Um, in 2012, there's a prospective double-blinded study looking at retinacular lengthening compared to a release. And they showed that le lengthening actually uh, led to less medial instability, less quadriceps atrophy, and better clinical outcomes at two years. Contraindications um, for an isolated lat lateral release, so doing this in isolation, include radiographic patellar subluxation, clinical um, patellar instability, again, because you get medial increased medial and lateral translation after the release and medial facet cartilage uh, injury, because again, this can increase medial facet load. So this patient uh, is, not an indi is not indicated for a isolated lateral release, but I did do a tibial tubercle osteotomy on her as well as a, a lateral release. So in association with another procedure, it's a good, good indication. 
Complications are, are pretty significant. Um, you can get medial facet overload as seen in the MRI. You can get medial and lateral patellar instability. You can get quadriceps shutdown. Um, you can get pain and recurrent effusions from this instability. So the key learning points are that lateral um, release should not be done for instability. Um, it can help with symptoms of chondrosis if the following factors are present. If it's isolated wear on the lateral facet or lateral trochlea, if there's tilt without subluxation, if there's no patellar instability, and if there's no medial facet chondrosis. You should limit the, the, the release to bring the patella to neutral and consider a lengthening instead of a release and also minimize tour, uh, tourniquet and nerve block use and start an accelerated PT program. Thank you.